Week number four of college football. Of course, we're predicting every single college football game this season. And I saw a comment um, asking about our overall record this season. I'll be honest with you, I have not tracked it yet, but for next week, week five, I will have the full record in the week by week breakdown. I'll be honest, I haven't been keeping track of the full record. Now I have my games that I bet on myself and I think I've been doing all right with college football. I'd say doing pretty well, um, but I will get you a full record next week. Of course, between college football and NFL every single week on the channel, which leads me to my next point. Make sure to go check out our NFL predictions coming on the channel tomorrow. Of course, every week we got college football going up on Tuesdays. We got the NFL going up on Wednesdays. And also yesterday we posted uh, some MMA PFL Mena predictions. Link to that is in the description down below. And folks, if you haven't yet though, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for again, weekly predictions all sports here on the channel. Let's get into it. We have got the full slate of games coming at you on Friday, or actually this game on Thursday, Friday, and everything on Saturday. We start things off again with every single game. We're going to go over these obviously real, well, not real quickly, but we're going to go into these games in depth, somewhat in depth, and then we're going to get into the 12 best games in the week, in my opinion. Starting things off with App State and South Alabama. This is the one game on Thursday. I'm taking uh, South Alabama to go into Appalachian State or go into North Carolina and cover the eight points. I think that's just a lot. I think actually as I'm checking this right now, the line since I made this graphic two hours ago has moved from eight to seven and a half. But if you can still get it at eight, I really like it. Even at seven and a half, I don't mind it either. I understand, I understand South Alabama is 0-2 against FBS schools so far this year, but it was a game against North Texas where they lost by 14 and a seven-point loss at Ohio. I put weight into that seven-point loss at Ohio. I don't think it's a horrible loss, right? Coming off of a 77-point victory last week against an FCS school, App State, 2-1, and one, a two-point win over East Carolina, and a loss to Clemson where they lost by 26 points. I don't know if App State can really beat South Alabama by more than two scores, by more than one score. I think App State wins the football game, but I feel like eight, even seven and a half points is a lot for the Mountaineers to cover. Give me South Alabama to cover that game, but Appalachian State will pick up the victory. Next up, we've got the two S's in the ACC, Syracuse and Stanford. Um, Stanford's just not very good, okay? Again, I watched this team play a couple weeks ago when they were at home against St. Louis Obispo or Cal Poly. They won the football game, but they weren't overly impressive, right? They almost beat TCU, but they fell apart at the end of that game. They get Syracuse on the road here in the JMA Wireless Dome up in up, upstate New York. Um... Syracuse coming off that big victory over Georgia Tech where they won that, that game by three points. They beat Ohio by 16. I think their level's ahead of Stanford. Again, Ashton Daniels, I think it leaves a lot to be desired at the quarterback position. I also hate Stanford's play calling. It's really bad. Uh, again, they will get into the red zone. They'll get within the five yard line, completely throw out, throw out everything in their offense and just run quarterback power. It's horrible. Stanford's play calling is terrible. Their defense isn't horrible, but I just think Syracuse, again, coming off of a three point victory against uh, Georgia Tech, they've had a full bye week to prepare for this. I think Syracuse dumb. Dominate Stanford at home. Give me the orange to cover and win the game by more than nine. We will skip a couple games as we're going to get into our futures later, but we now go on to the Saturday slate. We start things off with Ohio State and Marshall. I want to see Ohio State tested against a good team. Now they have done what, you know, it's a smart move. Since they have such a good conference schedule, they scheduled Akron, Western Michigan, and Marshall as their non-conference games. It makes sense. It really does. Again, you have three non-competitive games before you get into Michigan State next week, then Iowa, then Oregon, then Nebraska. I mean, there are some tough games for Ohio State coming up. But again, they schedule their non-conference right to the point where they don't have to play anybody. Personally, as a fan, it's not exciting, but they did what they needed to do. And I think they should cover the 40, 40 and a half against Marshall. They've beat every team they've played so far by 41 points or more. Marshall's coming off of a 17-point loss to Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech's not very good. Ohio State will steamroll Marshall, and they will cover the 40 and a half as well. Clemson and NC State. I, I hate it, but NC State was a school, again, I was very high on to start the season. I'm not afraid to say it, right? I thought this team, you know, had a chance coming out of the ACC. Obviously, that's not happening. Now, I like the Pitt Panthers a lot right now in the ACC. Knock on wood, they don't fall apart like NC State does. But Clemson is one and one, right? They beat App State by... 46 points. They got blown out by Georgia week one. They're back now taking on North Carolina State, and they should win the football game. They should absolutely dominate. NC State, again, leaves a lot to be desired. They went to that. They Sorry, they had Tennessee at home. They got killed by 41 points. Clemson should win this game at home. It's three touchdowns to cover, sure, but I think Clemson should be able to win this game. Cade Klubnick's been playing all right for this team. Again, the App State game, I think, was good for everyone on this Clemson squad to get back on track, and now you get an ACC game against a team that has given them trouble in the past as well in North Carolina State, but I think Clemson will win this football game and they will cover the 20 and a half as well or the 20 points as well next up we have got Miss mississippi state taking on florida 
yeah, we're going to go at Florida to go on the road and cover the six points. Should Mississippi State may be the worst team in the Southeastern Conference right now. I don't know. We will get to Toledo later, right? But Toledo beat the brakes off of Mississippi State, beat them 41 to 17 in Mississippi, right? Before that, Arizona State beat this MSU team by seven in Tempe. They beat Eastern Kentucky week one. But again, Mississippi State has just been very bad. I don't entirely think it's Blake Shapin's fault. It's just the team around him hasn't been playing, playing, hasn't been playing all that well. They don't have a single rusher over 100 yards yet on the season which is ridiculous over two games or three games actually florida again is not good either this is not a really good sec squad but you know they're just better than mississippi state look at the losses of florida and look at the losses of mississippi state losing to miami and AM isn't horrible but for mississippi state again i i think toledo is not bad but i mean come on toledo and arizona state not horrible teams but florida should be able to run them out the wa run them out the race here uh give me the gators to go on the road and cover the six points as well Indiana at home against Charlotte. Guys, I said it in the last episode or last video of this prediction series here. I told y'all, Indiana has a serious chance of going into their game against Ohio State in week 11, 10 and 0. They have a legitimate chance of doing it. Who's stopping this team on their schedule other than maybe Nebraska and maybe Michigan State? Other than that, guys, look at what Indiana's got in the schedule. Charlotte, Maryland, Northwestern, all wins. Nebraska will be tough, but it's in Bloomington. Washington, that's a win. Michigan State on the road, that one's going to be difficult. Michigan, they should win. I think they should. La then, then they get the game in Columbus against Ohio State. Do I think they beat Ohio State? Probably not. But seriously, I'm looking at Indiana at 11-1 this season. I'm serious. I think this team is that good. I am sold. I wasn't sold in the beginning of the season, but I am sold. I really am. I am sold on Curtis Rourke. I'm sold on this passing attack. Justice Ellison is doing his job at running back as well. I like Omar Cooper a lot. This team is not bad at all. Again, of course, it's the year after I leave Indiana, but it's okay. Um, look what they did to UCLA last week. 42 to 13 on the road in Pasadena. Kurt Signetti's out there looking like a hero to, you know, the entire city of Bloomington because he should be. I, I mean, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy, right? Indiana football has surpassed Indiana basketball this season because Indiana basketball, it, 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 it's got awful. But anyways, give me the Hoosiers to go in there and absolutely destroy the Charlotte team. I mean, again, it's 28 and a half points. Indiana is going to put a beat down on the Charlotte team that's only won one game so far this season, and it's against Gardner-Webb in which they won by one point. They lost to UNC by 18, lost to James Madison by 23. IU should put a beat down on them, and IU should win this game by about 40. Give me the Hoosiers to go out there and win the football game. Next up, North Carolina versus James Madison. I think UNC covers the 10 and a half. I, I think they do. We go from Kurt Signetti's new team to Kurt Signetti's old team. And JMU, sure, they are 2 0, right? They beat Gardner Webb 13 to 6, and they beat Charlotte 30 to 7. It's just, again, their offense leaves a little bit to be, to be desired, I'll be honest with you. Um, North Carolina should be able to put up points. Obviously, again, they're without their starting quarterback now. Max Johnson is out, so it's Connor Harrell now. And Harrell's done a decent job in taking over for the former LSU quarterback in Johnson. Uh, I think North Carolina should be fine in this game. They should be able to put a beat down on JMU here. Uh, James Madison, again, I don't really think can score on this North Carolina defense. Um, North Carolina has held Minnesota to 17. They held Charlotte to 20, which isn't great, but I don't really love the JMU offense. I think North Carolina is able to win the football game, and I think North Carolina, again, is able to put up points against this team and cover the 10 and a half as well. Cincinnati versus Houston. Give me Cincinnati to cover the three and a half. Um, Houston's just a weird team, right? I mean, again, they go from getting, you know, pretty much blown out at home against UNLV, which I don't know, man. UNLV is not that bad. Their running attack's really good. Shout out Matthew Sluka, that team, the former Holy Cross quarterback, that team's good. They went on the road to, uh, you know, Rock Chalk Jayhawk or whatever the hell and beat Kansas, right? I mean, good for UNLV, right? Houston loses that game, lose to UNLV. They lose to Oklahoma by only four points then. And then they lose, they saw they beat Rice 33 to seven. Now they go on the road to Cincinnati, a team that, you know, I thought was a pretty clear winner in that game over Miami of Ohio. I thought that spread line was way too, you know, short for Cincinnati to cover. Obviously, it's like four and a half. Cincinnati got that one pretty easily. Their only loss is a one point loss to Pitt, who is a, you know, a very good football team and a football team that's hard to put away and a football team that will be there at the end of the season when we're talking about the ACC championship game in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, but Cincinnati, again, they should be able to beat up on Houston, I think. Of course, this is a, this is a Big 12 game now. Since he hasn't been bad, Brendan Sorbs, he's been throwing the football pretty well so far this season. He has not thrown an interception. He's been, again, airing it out. Sorbs, he can run when he needs to. But, you know, that those big plays that Sorbs, he made on third down against Miami, Miami of Ohio won them that football game at points. Houston, I just don't think is very good. I am not, I'm not high on this Houston team at all. Um, so give me Cincinnati to win that game and cover pretty easily, too. I think they win the game by about a touchdown or more. Um, next up, we go to 
WVU, Western Virginia, and we've got Kentucky as well. So for West Virginia, right, this is a team that lost the backyard brawl to Pittsburgh last week. Hell of a football game. One hell of a game. Uh, but Pitt, again, is Pitt's good. I really like this Pittsburgh team a lot this season. You're going to hear me talk about Pitt a lot. Um, but West Virginia, right, loses the game by four. They did not play a horrible football game again just at the end of that game. Again, Pitt drove down the field, scored the touchdown, and won the game. For the Jayhawks, this is the team that, again, was disappointing last week against UNLV, was disappointing the week before against Illinois. Um, I thought, again, I thought they were going to have a close game with UNLV. I took UNLV to cover. I was a little bit iffy on the Rebels actually winning the football game. But Kansas, again, has been disappointing as of late. And for Western Virginia, too. West Virginia has been somewhat disappointing as well. Of course, losing to Penn State and then losing the backyard brawl as well. I think West Virginia wins the football game. Just what I've seen out of West Virginia, they're able to move the football a lot more. Their defense, their pass defense isn't very good. But I don't know if that's really just again, the teams they played. Because they played, you know, Drew Aller in Penn State. They played Eli Holstein in Pitt. Those aren't bad passing offenses at all. I don't really think Kansas is going to be able to move the football on them like that. Jalen Daniels has been not good this season he just hasn't he's thrown double the amount of interceptions that he's thrown touchdowns i think west virginia is able to stop that passing attack pretty easily i think again obviously when you look at kansas it's going to be devin neal in the running game but still if they're able to stop the run of first and second down i think they're going to be in a very good position on third down to stop jalen daniels who again has made some very iffy decisions so far this season give me west virginia to win the football game and give me them to cover at home in morgantown next up we've got Toledo. sorry not toledo uh tulane and louisiana we're taking Tulane to win the game, and we're taking them to cover against the Raging Cajuns. The Raging Cajuns are undefeated, but I, yeah, I don't really care. I think Tulane's the better football team by far. I think they are. And again, Tulane's played some really good football teams this year, right? They played K-State. They played Oklahoma. They lost both of them. That's fine. Again, we're going to talk about Kansas State later in the video. Oklahoma, we're going to talk about them as well. They're both in feature games this week. And I understand it again. Louisiana's 2-0, but they beat Grambling and Kennesaw State. Kennesaw State might be the worst FBS school this year, and Grambling is just an FCS school. It's not very good. Tulane's played better competition. They've been somewhat competitive in these football games. I like this Tulane team a lot. I think they are going to cover, and I think they're going to give a lot of teams trouble in the Sun Belt. Um, so give me to lane to win the game or sorry in the american on the sunbelt give me give me them to win and cover the football game of course louisiana is in the sunbelt and not Tulane. Tulane's in the american uh and again give me uh too late to win and cover the three points next up rice and army i i don't i don't really like picking the military schools but i'm taking army to win and to cover rice is just bad again army hey that win over FAU is impressive, right? You got Bryson Daly, of course, the starting quarterback of this team, who's working the option pretty well, I think, for Army. You got the former Kings Academy high school player, Noah Short, as their leading rusher now. Um, you know, Army's not a bad football program this year. I really don't think they are. I was a little bit down on them to start the year, but they beat Lee. They covered that game. They beat FAU, obviously, and covered that game, too. Uh, it's just Army's not bad, but Rice is just awful. I think Rice is absolutely horrible. Losing to Sam Houston by 20 points. They lost to Houston by 20-plus. They beat Texas Southern, but it's Texas Southern. Army's, again, Army's option offense, obviously. You know what they run. They should be able to really run the ball effectively against Rice. They're going to drain that clock, but at the same time, they're going to put up points. I don't really think that Rice is able to stop this team. Rice has given up 33 points to Houston and 34 points to Sam Houston in their two FBS games this season. Army should put up at least 30. And when you look at that, do you think that this Rice offense can put up 25 points? No, they've only put up, you know, 14 and 7 against their two FBS opponents. Army should be fine in this game. Give me the Black Knights who only give up 7 points to FAU. Yeah, they're going to win this game pretty easily. Give me the give me the give me the Black Knights Army to win the game and to cover. Next up, Ohio and Kentucky. I'm taking Ohio to cover. Um, I'm taking Kentucky to win the football game, obviously, right? Kentucky had that one point game against Georgia. You know, it wasn't bad. Their defense played really good. I don't know how much of that is Georgia actually isn't that good because Kentucky just lost 31 to 6 to South Carolina, right? I don't know how much to put in that. I don't, again, I am not keeping up with Kentucky that much to the point where I don't entirely know what's going on with their quarterback situation. I would like them see. I would like to see them go to Gavin Wimsat. I, I would really like to see that the former Ruck, Rutgers quarterback, who you know I watched play at Indiana last year. I'm I just assume he got beat out in camp by Brock Vandergriff, but I would like to see Gavin Wimsat get a shot at least. I like Wimsat a lot. Again, he's a mobile quarterback, obviously, but he you know he can throw the football when you need him to. Obviously, Vandergriff is the better throw of the ball, but it hasn't been like Vandergriff's been. You know, he's, he hasn't playing lights out for Kentucky, so. I don't know. I wouldn't mind seeing Gavin Wimsatt get a shot for this team. 
Again, if this game's a blowout, you will see it, but I don't think it will be a blowout. Ohio kept in somewhat close at Syracuse. They lost the game by 16 points. They beat South Alabama by seven. They beat Morgan State 21 to six. They should be able to stay within the 20 point range in this game. Um, just because I don't really like Kentucky's offense at all. They've scored 18 points in the last two weeks. And yeah, okay, they were competitive with Georgia. But again, their offense couldn't score. So again, I don't think they're able to score that effectively against Ohio. Give me, again, Ohio to cover the 20 points, but Kentucky obviously to win the football game. Give Gavin Wims that a shot. I don't know. I don't know. Give him a shot. Ball State versus CMU. Um, give me Ball State to cover against Central Michigan. There's a chance they outright win this game um, in Michigan. You know, the Chippewas haven't been good, right? They lose to FIU 52 to 16. They lose to Illinois 30 to 9. And I understand Ball State lost 62 to nothing to Miami, but that's the only game they've played at the FBS level so far this year. They beat who? Montana State did they play? Missouri State 42 to 34. Okay. Like, again, I don't think Ball State's great and all, but I think they are close enough to Central Michigan. I don't think this game should have a six and a half point spread. I think these teams are fairly even. I understand, again, Ball State's not one of the better teams in the Mid-American Conference, but Central Michigan isn't either. These are two lower level MAC schools, and I think Ball State should be able to remain competitive in this football game. They should be able to cover the spread. Who wins the football game? I'll lean very slightly Central Michigan, but really, you don't. I don't know really where these teams are out as a whole so far this season because of the games they have already played. I, and again, games that they, they have played, what are we doing? They both have been blown out against good teams. Like, it's just, it's rough to gauge really how good they are. We're taking Ball State to cover. Iowa State taking on Arkansas State. I think Arkansas State covers the 22. Again, we said it last week they were going to cover against Michigan. Obviously, that happened. I think they cover again, right? Iowa State, back-to-back -back victories where they scored 21 and 20 points. I understand against it's against UND and against Iowa, who obviously has a great defense. But Arkansas State has not been horrible this season. They've had just three really close games. They had a 10-point loss to Michigan, obviously, where they got three interceptions in that game, the only three incompletions that Michigan threw. They had a four-point win um, at home against Tulsa. They beat Central Arkansas by three points at home. I understand it. Again, they barely beat Central Arkansas. But they've had close games. They've been able to remain competitive in a lot of these games. I don't think... Iowa State's able to pull away by that much. 22 points again is a lot of points. Considering again they're playing a 2 and 1 team who just played the reigning defending champions close. And I understand that Michigan is not the same team at all. They aren't, but still Arkansas State was able to remain a little bit competitive. I think they're able to keep this game in the 14 point range. I just, I just think 22 is way too much because again, Iowa State has to cover by let's just say four touchdowns or three touchdowns and a field goal. That's a lot of points. I think Arkansas State loses obviously, but they cover the 22. Um, I think they do it fairly easily too. I think they lose the game by about 14 points, maybe less. To our next one, Coastal Carolina and Virginia. I'm taking Coastal Carolina to cover the three points at home and we're taking them to upset Virginia. The Cavaliers to me, leave a lot to be desired. Uh, losing to Maryland last week by 14 points, as expected, sure, but the Chanteliers are undefeated. I understand the teams they've played, Jacksonville State, William & Mary, and Temple in their last game. Those aren't the best schools, but still, they're an undefeated team. Ethan Vasco has played good at quarterback for this team. Virginia, again, is coming off a loss to... Um, God, I'm blanking. They lost to Maryland, beat Wake Forest week before that by one. I don't really like Virginia that much this season. This is a tough game for them going on the road against the Chanteliers team that's going to be fired up to win this football game, an undefeated Chanteliers team that they know if they win this football game, now they are officially in the running for the postseason because getting a huge win over an ACC school, assuming Coastal can win the Sun Belt, which will be difficult, but still, if they have Sun Belt Championship in mind, a win over Virginia, again, doesn't do anything for them towards the Sun Belt Championship, but it makes it a lot easier on them to potentially make the playoffs. Give me the Chanteliers to win and obviously to cover the three points at home. I think Ethan Vasco and the guys are able to get it done. Give me the shots. Next up, Utah State goes on the road to take on Temple. Temple is horrible. They just are. 0-3, uh, they have a loss to Coastal, a loss to Navy, a loss to Oklahoma. Utah State has not been all that impressive. Their only win is against Robert Morris. Back back losses to USC and to Utah. You know, I kind of thought Bryson Barnes was going to be playing a little bit better for this school. It's okay. Um, they are much better than Temple, though. I don't really have much to say about this game. They are still much better than Temple. I don't care they're going on the road. They are going to dominate this Owls team. Temple is pitiful. They're going to go 2-10 this season, and Utah State's going to go there and win the football game and dominate. Give me the Aggies to win that one. Next up, Southern Miss and the Jacksonville State. Uh, God, what are they? Are they the game? Gamecocks. They are the Gamecocks. Yeah, the Gamecocks are 0-3, right? Southern Miss isn't very good either. This is, you know, this is a toilet bowl, I'll be honest. Uh, it's, it's, it's 
not that good of a football game. No offense if you like these schools, but it's just this isn't your year either squad, right? Jacksonville State's 0-3, Eastern Michigan, Louisville, Coastal for Southern Miss, South Florida, Kentucky losses, which in all fairness, aren't the worst losses. They really aren't. Um, with that being said, we're taking Southern Miss in this game because um, I don't know why Jacksonville State's getting six points at home. I don't know. Jacksonville State, you know, lost a close game to East Michigan, sure. They got blown out by Louisville, blown out by Coastal. Southern Miss, they've just played two decent teams. I understand they lost 31 nothing to Kentucky, but still, it's Southern Miss going to Kentucky. And then South Florida, and eh, not a great loss, but... I just think six and a half is too much. I think there's a very good chance Southern Miss wins this game, right? Tater Rodemaker's their quarterback, you know, the former FSU quarterback. He hasn't done great for Southern Miss, but I think, again, Southern Miss is the better quarterback in this football game. I think they have the better offense in this football game. And all as a round, as you know, as a whole, I just think they're better than Jacksonville State. And yes, I'm taking Rodemaker over Tyler Huff over there from Jacksonville State. I understand, again, Huff's a dual threat guy. He can do a lot, but... I do like Ron and Maker better, and I think Southern Miss wins this football game, and I think they do cover the six and a half as well. Next up, we have got <laughs> Kent State versus Penn State. Uh, guys, it's I'd hate I'd hate to be in the locker room at Kent State right now. I hate it. You lost by forty. You sorry. You lost by seventy something points to Tennessee. You're down like sixty three to nothing at halftime, or fifty. Seven. I don't know how much they were down. They were, you know, at one point, I thought they were going to lose by 100 points. Um, now, you know, you go from losing. So this is what Kent State's done this season. Losing at Pitt. You lose against an FCS school at home, St. Francis, PA. You lose at Rocky Top. And now you're going to Penn State. Penn State by 100. Penn State covers the spread. I don't have anything else to say about that school. I, Kent State's just... We're going to keep talking about the Golden Flashes every week, but this is not their week, okay? It's not their week it just it isn't it, it, it's it's bad guys it's bad lsu and ucla uh, lsu should cover the 24 points right uh indiana was able to cover that on the road in pasadena lsu should be able to do the same exact thing they had a dog fight against the gamecocks last week sure their offense is going to be able to put up numbers though against ucla and ucla's offense stalls out once they get into plus territory um they just they stall out really all you know they stall out the entire game but especially when they get into plus territory lsu will be able to put up points ucla won't be able to put up points and that's why lsu is going to cover that game and win fairly easily in baton rouge ucla should not have made the jump to the big 10 but there they are I hope it works for them in basketball. Next up, we've got the whole next slate. Notre Dame and Miami of Ohio. Miami of Ohio is going to cover the 28 points. Okay, it's cool. It's great. Notre Dame, they beat Purdue. They beat the fourth best team in the state of Indiana. I don't care. Miami of Ohio is covering the 28 points, okay? They're back in South Bend, okay? You're back in South Bend. Expectations are back. Marcus Freeman, you can't lose back-to-back -back games at home, right? Against two max schools, you can't do it. Um, I don't think they will, but I think, again, Miami of Ohio, at some point in this game, is going to be in the lead. They're not going to win the football game. They just lost last week against Cincinnati at home. They're not going to win the football game, but they're going to put up 14 points, and that's going to be enough for them to cover the 28. They're going to lose the football game 38-14. to 14. Notre Dame will not cover. Miami of Ohio, again, will cover the 28 points, but not win the football game. But I think they will be in the lead at some point in this football game, probably 7 to nothing. Okay, Louisville and Georgia Tech. Kind of split on this one, but I'm taking Georgia Tech to cover the 10 and a half. I don't think they're that far off of Louisville. And I haven't seen Louisville against a really good school yet. So I wouldn't bet anything on this game. I wouldn't. But Georgia Tech's 3-1. and one. They're coming off an FCS win last week. Their only loss is a three-point loss on the road to Syracuse, right? The win over FSU obviously doesn't hold the weight it once did. They beat Georgia State. That's great. I just, we will see about Georgia Tech right? I just don't know where to gauge Louisville right now. That's why I'd stay away from this game. But again, the big problem surrounding Haynes King coming into the season was the turnover problem. He's only thrown one interception so far in four football games. And given they they run the football a lot, but still Haynes King had like the Jameis Winston set going on, but like in the 15-15 range, not in 30-30, right? I don't know where to rate Louisville just yet. Again, they are ranked 19, but they beat Austin PA and Jackson State. Sorry, Jacksonville State. Those are the two games they've won so far this season. Tyler Shaw's been good. Great. Harrison Bailey's their backup quarterback. I believe the former volunteer, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I just don't know where to gauge Louisville. This is their first decently, you know, ranked or decently matched up game of the season. With that being said, I think they win, but I think this game will be a lot closer. I think, again, in Louisville's first 
tightly contested game of the season, they aren't able to completely blow out Georgia Tech. Give me Georgia Tech to stay in the football game but lose, but Louisville again will not cover the 10 and a half. I'm taking the Yellow Jackets on the spread. Buffalo and North Illinois, Northern Illinois. I'm taking Buffalo to cover the 14 points in Northern Illinois to win the football game. Buffalo's my squad, right? I've taken them twice so far this season. I took them to cover against Lafayette. That game was like, it was ridiculous. Buffalo was only getting four points because an FCS school at home in week one. I took them to beat UMass. That was my big play last week. And they beat UMass by 31 points. Again, that game was like, what? They were getting minus five, minus three and a half at home. Ridiculous. Buffalo is not that bad. Again, I... I kind of like this offense. I do, right? I like CJ a lot. Their defense has been holding teams so far this season. Don't get me wrong. I think they lose to Northern Illinois because the game is in Northern Illinois. Um, however, I think Buffalo's kind of close to NIU in terms of talent. I think if this game, if Northern Illinois had not beat Notre Dame, Notre Dame, the odds would be at, well, obviously, the odds would be at like minus three and a half Northern Illinois. I probably would still take Northern Illinois. I think they're slightly better. But this game's going to be close. I think Buffalo loses this game by a field goal. I think they do. I think Buffalo keeps up with NIU. NIU's defense is good, right? But their offense, even though Ethan Hampton has played well so far this season, their offense is just okay, I think. I think Buffalo stays in the football game. They will lose, but I think it's a very competitive one. The Huskies will win and remain ranked. And again, they will have their big matchup next week at NC State, which I think they will win. Um, we will get to that game, though, and I will, re I will reevaluate after I see NIU play Buffalo and NC State against Clemson. But, um... Northern Illinois has a very good chance to make the postseason this year. I Again, we talk about these group of five teams. Who's the favorite to come out of the group of five? I talk about it every week. NIU right now is definitely the favorite. They should be. Um, we'll see. I think they barely get by Buffalo, though. I like this Buffalo Bulls team quite a bit. Um, but NIU will win, but not cover the football game. Next up, we got Arkansas and Auburn. I'm taking Auburn to cover the three at home against Arkansas. Um, you know, right? It's just... I don't, I'm not I'm not too fond of Arkansas, right? Losing to Oklahoma State, sure, that's not a bad loss. They only beat UAB by 10. Auburn, I know they, again, lost to Clemson, sorry, lost to Cal. Uh, they're coming off that big win over Dampier and New Mexico. They beat them 49 to 19. I like New Mexico quite a bit. Surprisingly, I like the Lobos. I think they're, you know, they're a team that's just good enough just to lose. Um, but they will give, give you a very entertaining football game. Um, Auburn looked good in that game. They got the offense back on track. Peyton Thorne and the guys were able to get going, and they should be able to get going once more. This game's at home, which means, again, they should be able to win this game by a touchdown. I think they win this one and cover the three points at home against Arkansas. So next up, we have got um, Rutgers and VTech. Taking Rutgers to go in to Blacksburg and cover the three and a half points. Um, the Hokies, you know, I it will not get out of my mind They're the Hokies game where they lost to Vanderbilt. I don't care what they have done since. They lost to Vanderbilt in a game that, again, the Hokies are supposed to win. They just are. Kyron Jones is supposed to win that football game. They beat Marshall. They beat ODU. I don't care. Like, those are just... They're just wins. I don't know. They're not, they don't blow you away by any stretch of the imagination. Rutgers back to back victories over Howard and Akron, and they have not had a close game so far this season. I think Rutgers is the better football team. They have recovered it decently since losing Wimsat in the portal, obviously. They got Kalamankis, I believe that's how you pronounce his name. Of course, the former Minnesota Golden Gopher. Uh, they've got their, their running back, too. Um, Kyle Monaga, I believe. I probably butchered his name. Uh, but, you know. Rutgers isn't bad. Their rushing attack's pretty solid. Um, and I think they're able to put up points against VTech. I think Rutgers goes on the road and covers and wins. Uh, next up, we have got Duke and Middle Tennessee State. Give me the Blue Devils to go on the road and cover this game. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't like I don't like Middle Tennessee that much this season. They're one and two. Back about losses to Western Kentucky and Ole Miss, which aren't bad schools. But again, I will keep bringing this up every time I talk about the Blue Raiders. They beat Tennessee Tech by seven points. Uh, that kind of just is a precursor to how their season's going to go this year. Don't get me wrong, Duke's had two games so far against FBS schools, and they've both been close. Northwestern, they won by six. They beat UConn by five. This is the game, though. They should be able to pull away from a team. They are undefeated. They're 3-0. They should be going into their game next week in the you know co the college basketball rivalry, UNC and Duke. They should be going into that game 4-0, assuming they beat Middle Tennessee on the road, which is a little rough and kind of makes me want to pick Middle Tennessee to cover the 14. But I just think Duke's the all-around better football team. I think Middle Tennessee is the worst team they've played so far this season other than their FCS uh, opponent in Elon. So I think Duke should be fine. They should cover the 14 points um, on the road. I liked how this team came back against Northwestern, rallied, won the game in double overtime. I think they're able to put everything together in this game, win and cover. Give me the Blue Devils to go out here and win and squash the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders. 
Next up, Vandy in Missouri. Missouri covers, and I think that's to the surprise of absolutely nobody. Um, you know, Missouri had a tough game last week against Boston College, but Boston College is a very good football team. We're going to get to them in one of the future games later. Um, I don't know. They have a rough game against Michigan State. We'll get to that one. But, you know, hey, I'm very high on Buffalo, and Missouri shut down Buffalo and beat them 38-0. And I know, again, I'm talking about the a top five school in the country, top 10 school in the country, comparing them to, hey, they play Buffalo really well. But I think that speaks volumes. Missouri you know, was able to shut down a decent team in the MAC. I don't think anyone again thought Buffalo was going to be a de decent team in the MAC. I think they're upper half, at least the Mid-American Conference. Um, but now they get Vanderbilt at home. They should be fine. Vandy just lost at, uh, on the road to Georgia State. It's kind of all you need to know. Yes, they beat Virginia Tech, but Virginia Tech just sucks too. Missouri's able to win the football game, and they will absolutely blow Vanderbilt out the water. This is a 28-plus point victory by the Tigers winning this game at home. Easily, they will cover the 20 and a half. Next up, Texas Christian goes on the road to Southern Methodist. I think TCU wins the football game, and I think they cover as well on the road. Again, you got two Texas schools here. TCU has out-recruited SMU in the offseason. They've been out-recruiting them for years, I think. Um, I think TCU is way better. They beat Stanford by seven points at the beginning of the season. They lost their last game to UCF by one. Okay. Um, again, it's a game at home. UCF is not horrible, right? Josh Hoover, he's not the problem, obviously, for this football team. He's been airing it out. He's got 1,000 yards over three games. He hasn't thrown an interception yet. TCU's offense is good. Their defense just has to hold Southern Methodist here. And SMU's offense has stalled out time in and time out so far this season. They lost the game against BYU. They went to Reno and barely got out of that one with the victory. Yeah, this SMU team is not the same SMU team that we've seen the last couple of seasons. TCU's way better here. Their offense will be able to dominate on the road, and Texas Christian will be able to air the football out and win this football game. Next up, UTEP takes on Colorado State. Obviously, you know, the Rams are coming off of that game against Colorado, and of course, you know, the whole antics at the end of the game, right? With Shador Sanders, you know, oh, you're talking all that on Instagram with Braden Fowler, right? Again, it is what it is. Um, now, again, Colorado did what they needed to do in that game. They absolutely did what they needed to do. Again, it was a much, you know, wider margin from their game last year, played in Boulder. I'm glad Colorado put a beat down on Colorado State. That's what they're supposed to do, right? Colorado State now comes back at home to take on the UTEP Miners. I don't think Colorado State's that good. They are definitely bottom half of the Mountain West. However, UTEP might be the worst team in the Conference USA. Lost Nebraska, lost at home to an FCS school in Southern Utah, and then lost to Liberty by 18 points. This team isn't good. The Miners are horrible. Colorado State's not very good, but Colorado State should be able to put up points to this team. UTEP's offense is dog awful. Um, that's not a term, but it's fine. Colorado State's just the better football team here. UTEP's 0-3, and Colorado State should win. Guys, this USA is just absolutely pitiful. It is. With the exception of Liberty in Western Kentucky and maybe Sam Houston now, the CUSA is so bad this year. Liberty has their path to the playoffs. They just got to hope these teams like NIU and, again, all these other squads, the teams coming up the MAC, um, don't go undefeated because they have their ranked wins or their wins against um, against uh, Power 5, Power 4 teams. They just got to hope that doesn't happen because, again, Liberty should be able to walk their way right into the playoffs as an undefeated team because, again, the schools that are in the CUSA are just not that great. Which reminds me, we're going to Liberty next. They should be able to beat up on East Carolina. And I get it, again, ECU is not a team coming up the CUSA. But again, if this is a team that Liberty is expected to beat. Okay, I'm not saying Liberty's bad, but I'm just saying they're a good school that's going to beat up on a lot of these teams. It's not their fault the CUSA is horrible, right? But the same thing happened last year. They got to the Fiesta Bowl. They got killed by Oregon. And given that same exact thing might happen this season, but you never know until you actually play the football game, right? Liberty will dominate East Carolina. They're coming off a two-point loss to uh, Southern Miss. But Caden Slaughter is good. You know, he is. Their run game is getting going. They've got Quinton Cooley. They got Billy Lucas as well. They got that two-headed two -headed monster at running back. Um, East Carolina struggles to put up points. Liberty will stop their offense, and Liberty will put up points on their own end. So give me the Flames to win that game and cover the 7.5 as well. Next up, Miami goes on the road to Southern Florida, to South Florida. Give me the Hurricanes. Again, I was a little dubious about Miami coming into the season, and sure, nothing has changed since their Florida victory. I was, you know, I gave credit to where credit was due when they beat Florida, right? They have not played a credible team since. They played Florida A&M, they played Ball State. 
Now they're playing Southern Florida, which is South Florida, which is a little bit better, right? South Florida always takes on these good teams. They play Alabama. They lost. They stayed competitive in the first half, but eventually again, Alabama rolled away with that one. No pun intended. Actually, pun intended, definitely. But, um, you know, South Florida's coming off a win over Southern Miss. That's great. Miami should dominate the football game. 16 and a half just is not enough. Um, Right. I understand it. going to USF is rough. Again, Alabama experienced that firsthand last season, but this Miami team is really going this season. They have not had a game where they haven't scored 40 points just yet. I think they will put up 40 points again in this game. And that makes you, you know, that's just, I'm just gonna ask the question. Do you think at USF can put up at least four touchdowns on Miami? If the answer is no, which it probably should be, Miami's going to win and cover this football game because that's how many points they are going to put on the Bulls. Give me the Hurricanes to win this Florida matchup. We go on to our next one. Northwestern goes to Seattle to take on the Washington Huskies. I'm taking Washington to win the football game very slightly, but Northwestern's going to cover this one. Ten and a half is too much. Um, guys, UW's not the same team. I've been saying it all season long. I took Wazoo to go in there to get go into Seattle. Again, it was a neutral site game, but it was at the Seahawks stadium. It's a 15 train 15 minute train ride away from campus if that uh you know at washington and again we took wazoo to go in there and cover it they won the football game northwestern i don't think they win the football game but i think they definitely cover right um northwestern's got a good defense and washington's offense is bad it is, it is bad it's just you know oh well okay it's not horrible, but they just, they again, like I mentioned earlier in the video, I forget what team I thought was talking about, how they stall in the red zone, those UCLA. Um, no, Washington is the personification of stalling out once you get into plus territory. I swear, every time Washington got into Washington State territory, they stalled out in that game, right? Will Rogers was playing well, but they get into Wazoo territory and then nothing would happen. Again, you're playing a very good defense in Northwestern team that's going to really limit what you're able to do offensively. I think it's a really tough ask for Washington to win this football game. I'm serious. I think it is. I, I think they will, but I definitely think it's a competitive game. I think it's a competitive game that Northwestern stays in. Um, also, what was that fourth and goal play that Washington ran? A speed option from the one yard line? W what are you doing? Run the ball up the middle. Run up the middle. Uh, I think Washington wins, but I, I think Northwestern covers. I, I'm not high on UW this year. Uh, again, that game against Wazoo proved it. Washington is not the same team. Obviously, again, you lose all your weapons. You're just not the same school anymore, right? Again, you lose your four big players. Polk, McMillan, Odunze, Penix, no championship. Jabbar Muhammad, again, their best corner went to Oregon as well, right? That's just, it's just rough all around for the Washington Huskies. Next up, we have got UConn taking on Florida Atlantic. I think FAU goes into Connecticut, and I think they cover, and I think they win. And now, again, FAU lost to Army, sure, but they looked good in the FIU game. They won the game by 18 points. And UConn, their only win this season is Merrimack, right? And good for them. They were competitive at Duke. They were not competitive at Maryland, but they were competitive at Duke, right? Good for them. Florida Atlantic's the better football team. They just are. I think, again... Army's a tough team per to prepare for. They lost the game by 17 points. All right. You know, Michigan State, not bad. They're undefeated. They beat FIU. I'm a little bit concerned about FIU's offense because it's just, I don't know. They, they, nothing really blows me away on their offense. Their run game isn't bad. Mobley's not a horrible running back. Um, and that's really what they have to do to win this football game. They're going to have to run the ball effectively against UConn, which they should be able to, right? I mean... I wouldn't be too concerned about that. Duke was able to run the ball pretty well against uh, UConn. And FAU should be able to do the same thing. So I think FAU is just the better football team. They'll go into East Hartford, I believe, and win the game and cover the two and a half, obviously, as well. Next up, Louisiana Tech, Louisiana Tech takes on Tulsa. Give me Louisiana Tech to cover the three and a half. Um, Tulsa has been disappointing this season. They're one and two. They beat Northwestern State, a team, okay, FCS school, and they lost back-to-back -back games to Arkansas State and Oklahoma State. Given, again, Arkansas State close loss isn't horrible, and losing, losing to Oklahoma State obviously isn't bad either. Um, but they take on Louisiana Tech, who, again, is another team. I just don't know how good they are, right? Losing to NC State by 10, but where does that put you considering how NC State has played this season and then beating Nichols by eight points? an FCS school who played LSU too, but like, I don't know. Louisiana Tech, it's weird. They run two quarterbacks for the most part. They got Jack Turner and Blake Baker. Their run game is pitiful, but Tulsa is pretty bad too. They just are. I mean, like their run game isn't very good either. Their passing game is just okay. Both these teams leave a lot to be desired. And when you have games like this, where there's two teams that just aren't very good, 
you usually take the team at home when you you know don't have a clear hunch either way i'm taking the home team tulsa's got to go to louisiana tech which is not very far but it's fine it's a couple states over um i think louisiana tech wins the football game and i think they cover i would not lay anything on this game though because literally anything could happen with these two not great schools all right i'll, I'll put it nicely New Mexico State goes on the road to Sam Houston. I did not think Sam Houston had it like that this season. I'm not going to lie. After their god-awful start last season, I did not think they were going to be this good this year. I understand they lost to UCF, but I didn't think they were going to beat up on Hawaii by that much. I didn't think so. And they beat Rice by 20 points. New Mexico State it isn't good. Uh, now, I thought after their Liberty game, I was like, all right, maybe they're not horrible. I thought they were going to be able to go to Fresno, have a somewhat competitive football game. No, Fresno State ran them out the building. It's just New Mexico State's offense is just, it's not good. They have no threat in the pass game. They have absolutely zero threat. Guys, Parker Awad, their starting quarterback, has a 35% completion rate. Yeah, it, they leave a lot to be desired on offense. They can't throw the football. They are super one-dimensional. Sam Houston's going to stop their run. And the thing is, what is New Mexico, New Mexico State going to do once they get behind by 14 points? They're going to keep running the football? No, they're going to fall behind by a lot because they can't throw the ball. And they're not going to be able to catch up either. Sam Houston is going to dominate this team. And I never thought I'd be saying this about the Bearcats, but Sam Houston is just the way better football team this season. Sam Houston won the game. They will cover pretty easily. They're going to win this game by 28 points, okay? They're going to win this game by 28 points. New Mexico State is just, they, they can't get things going on offense. They can't, in terms of their passing game, once they fall behind, they are going to stay behind. Next up, we have got um, North Texas and Wyoming. I've been super disappointed in Wyoming this season. I'll just be honest with you. I just, God, I just, I don't know. Three straight losses, Arizona State, Idaho, BYU. They're not going to get one this week. The, the mean green are going to beat them, I think. Um, just because, you know, North Texas regardless in wins or losses they just put up points chandler morris is not afraid to sling it this guy has thrown the ball a lot so far this season he has 900 yards so far in the year um you know he's nine touchdowns and six interceptions but he is trying to get his guys the football and they are again they are not afraid to air things out which i don't think is going to hurt them in this game considering they're playing a wyoming team that has scored they're they've scored 14 points at most in a game so far this year they've scored 14 13 and 7 and their defense isn't very good either. So again, North Texas, like they've been doing so far this season, they can turn the ball over and they will still be fine because Wyoming's not going to capitalize on that. At most, they're going to get a field goal. North Texas is good in this game. They're going to dominate against Wyoming. Again, Wyoming's offense is very bad. They can't do anything with the football. They can't move the football. They stall out every time they get over midfield. So they have to punt eventually. North Texas should be fine. They should win the football game pretty decisively. Bowling Green versus Texas A&M. Give me Bowling Green to cover the 23 points. Again, same team that covered against Penn State. They only lost the game by seven. That's the last game they played. They got a bye week. The whole week, whole another week to prepare for A&M. Aaron, A&M, you know, beat Florida by, by 13 points. I don't think they're that great. I don't think Florida is that great either. Nor do I think Notre Dame's all that great. And those are the teams that Texas A&M have played. I, nothing on this team blows me away. Their passing offense isn't very good, right? Um, yeah, it's just, you know, Marcel Reed's better, I think, than Wiegman, but I don't know. Their, Texas A&M doesn't wow me at all. Like, yeah, they'll run the ball pretty effectively. They will. They will run the ball very effectively against Bowling Green. That's for sure. Um, but other than that, like, how do they win this? How do they, how do they win by more than 21 points? They're going to run the ball, but Bowling Green, they will have their moments where they will score too. Don't get me wrong. Again, Bowling Green, Connor Bazelak is one of the better quarterbacks in the MAC, And I understand he hasn't wowed anyone for sure this season just yet. But Bazelak's one of the better guys in the MAC. Bowling Green should be fine. They're going to lose, but they will stay competitive and they will cover the spread in this one. Next up, Akron going to South Carolina. Give me the Gamecocks to cover the 28 points. Akron's just not good. They've been very bad for a very long time. Ben Finley. I'm glad Ben Finley's getting the start at this point. I like Ben Finley. Of course, former Cal transfer. He's a Cal transfer coming in for Akron. I like him. I, I do. I like Ben Finley a lot. Um, I think I'm glad he got this opportunity here. But again, you're going to South Carolina, who, sure, only beat Old Dominion by four. But as they've got going so far this season, they have, you know, I'll be honest, they have surprised me. They kept competitive against LSU. They blew out Kentucky. All right. At the beginning of the season, I didn't think the Gamecocks were going to be all that. After their game against ODU, I, for now, I was proved wrong. I think they go out here and they dominate Akron. Akron got killed by Ohio State, obviously. South Carolina is going to do something along the lines of that. They'll win the football game by 35 points. 
Okay, we go on to our next one here. Iowa and Minnesota. Iowa's getting two and a half at are on the road, and I think they cover here. Again, their defense is just really good. Troy put up 21 points in them, which is the most any teams put on them so far this season. Again, you know the, you know the problems that Iowa's gonna have. They can't they can't do anything offensively. Cade Nat McNamara, not that good. The run game is decent, and they need to get that going at all times. Um, but I think they're able to shut down Minnesota. But at the same time, God, Minnesota's defense is not that bad either. 17 points or 19 points in a loss to North Carolina. Zero points against Rhode Island. Zero points against Nevada. Yeah, uh, this is going to be a rough game because Iowa's not going to let Minnesota score either because you know that's just going to happen because that's how Iowa plays. Guys, the final score of this football game is going to be 6-3. to three. Iowa's going to win 6-3. They will cover the spread. And there you go. They will cover two and a half. This is going to be the most low, low scoring game of the week. The over-under is 35 and a half. We hammer the under this week. No shot that gets over 35 because Minnesota's defense has been stepping up. You know, Iowa's offense is horrible and Iowa's defense will shut down a lot of teams. So yeah, under totally in this game. Iowa, I think wins seriously like 6-3, 9-3 will be a very low scoring game that they barely cover because two and a half just is not that many points. Um, next up, we will go to our final small slate here. We've got real quickly, I'll go over these. I mean, Ole Miss. What, what do I need to say about Ole Miss and Georgia Southern? What do I need to say? What, what do I need to say? Ole Miss has not played a great team yet. They will not play a great team till LSU, okay? But this is, again, one of the better schools in the SEC. Ole Miss might win the damn thing this year in the SEC. We'll see. Texas is very good. I don't know. Um, but I think we might see a Texas Ole Miss SEC championship game. I wouldn't be surprised. They don't play each other in the regular season. I, I think it would happen. Uh, and Ole Miss will dominate Georgia Southern and Oxford, obviously. Same thing about Texas and Ewell Monroe. Like, I, you know, I don't need to spell this one out for you. Sure, Ewell Monroe's 2-0. But Texas is the best damn team in the country, by far. And yeah, it'll be Arch Manning. Great. Arch Manning will be able to dominate this team. This is the game Arch Manning needs. It's on prime time. It's a night game. And you're getting a UL Monroe squad, who is 2-0, but a UL Monroe team that Texas should absolutely kill. Okay, that's the perfect first start for Arch Manning at home. That's what they need. That's what Texas needs before Quinn Ewers comes back. But yeah, this is domination. Texas absolutely destroys UL Monroe. Um, give me the Longhorns to cover whatever the line is. 44 and a half? Yeah, easy. And again, UL Monroe's, uh, UL Monroe's undefeated, but still, I don't give a damn. New Mexico and Fresno State. I like the, again, I like New Mexico a lot. I do. I like New Mexico. I like Devin Dampier, but at the same time, this team's 0-3. And, and this is my thing with New Mexico. They are good enough just to lose, right? They were good enough. They stayed competitive enough in the Auburn game. They were in the game, or at least they were covering the spread in the third quarter, and eventually it just got away from them. The same thing is going to happen here against Fresno State. They are going to stay in the game until it gets away from them. And then Fresno State will cover. Fresno State's going to win the game. They're going to pull away eventually. Mikey Keene's playing very good football for the school. Um, and again, Fresno State should be one of the better teams to come out the mid or sorry, the Midwest, Midwest, Mountain West. Uh, it could be Fresno State. And again, Mikey Keene's been doing all right. He has been throwing some picks, but I think Fresno State's fine. They should be able to win this game. They should do it pretty easily. Our final game before we get into the features, uh, Oregon State takes on Purdue. Um, Purdue's coming off of that dismantling that happened in West Lafayette where they lost 66 to 7. Oregon State looked horrible against Oregon, but I'm willing to say that's more of Oregon finally turned into Oregon rather than Oregon State's not that good. Purdue's not that good, and Oregon State will be able to run the football up and down the damn field the entire damn game against Purdue. Hankerson and the guys in that rushing attack should be able to absolutely dominate. Give me Oregon State to beat up on Purdue. Again, it is rough. You're a team coming from Indiana to play a 7-30 game. Oh, it's 5-30, but still. You're playing a 5-30 game on the road at Oregon State. You're coming from Indiana. That's rough. Give me Oregon State to win and to cover pretty easily. All right. To the future games, we start off here with Nebraska and Illinois. This is a Friday night game. Uh, of course, you got the Patrick Mahomes wannabe and Dylan Riola. They get a ranked team coming to Lincoln, and Nebraska should win. Okay, right? They beat Colorado 28-10. to They beat UTEP by 33 points. They are just the better team than Illinois. Illinois has beat Kansas, but that win has not aged all that well. Illinois' offense really just is not horrible either, but I just think Nebraska is simply better. I think they're able to put up more points. I don't know if we get a shootout of sorts, but I like I trust Nebraska's defense more. I trust Nebraska's offense, offense more. All around, to me, they are just the better football team. Nebraska is going to win this football game, and they're going to cover the nine points as well. Give me the Cornhuskers. Dylan Riola remains undefeated in his Patrick Mahomes cosplay year. Give me Nebraska to win the football game and them to cover as well. Next up, guys, here's your upset pick. San Jose State will go into Pullman, and they will beat the Washington State Cougars. Yes, 
We took Washington State to cover against uh, UW last week. Now we are taking them to lose. Give me the Spartans. Yeah, San Jose State's been playing really good football and it's going unnoticed. We want to talk about the elite of the Mountain West. And the Mountain West is good this season. And a lot of teams in a couple of years are going to be going over to the Pac-12, Pac Pac-10, whatever it's going to be. But there are some good football teams in the Mountain West. San Jose State, Fresno State, Boise State, UNLV. Those are four really good football teams. And San Jose State is going to continue to show out for the Mountain West. They are going to go to Washington State. They are going to win this football game. And they are going to be on the cusp of getting ranked after they beat the Washington State Cougars. And I get it. Washington State's offense is good. John Maytier is really good. He can run. He can throw. UW had no answers for Maytier in that game uh, just last week. I get it. But San Jose State's defense has been playing really good football. They shut down Kennesaw, but so they shut down Kennesaw, they shut down Army, Emmett Brown's been playing really good, Nick Nash is having a monster season that nobody's talking about in three games, Nick Nash has 500 yards receiving, San Jose State is legit, they are, they're going to go on the road, keep the points, give me San Jose State to go into Pullman and win the football game, the Spartans get their biggest win of the season, give me San Jose State to win. Next up we got USC and Michigan, I am taking USC to win the football game, and we're taking them to cover as well, guys Michigan's not good, they, they just aren't, Davis Warren, again, six interceptions so far in the season, is Alex Orgy the solution, I don't know if that's entirely the case, um, but yeah, USC is just much better than Michigan. They just are. Um, Southern beat LSU at Allegiant Stadium uh, week one, right? Miller Moss is playing really good football, I would say, right? They beat up on Utah State last week. Again, USC is just the better football team as a whole. They are much better than Michigan. Michigan's offense leaves a lot to be desired. They can't push the ball downfield. They barely beat Arkansas State. I just, again, I don't know if Alex Orgy is truly the solution to fix this football team and to fix this offense. But regardless, USC is the better football team. USC should dominate this game, and the Trojans should be able to win on the road. Don't care. It's in the big house. Texas did it too. Again, Texas is the best team in the country, but still, USC is top 15 at the very least. Give me the Trojans to win the football game and to cover the five and a half as well. Next up, we go to Arizona State and Texas Tech. I'm taking Arizona State to go on the road and win this football game. Um, again, we are taking a lot of road teams to go in here and win, but I just think Arizona State's better than Texas Tech. I think they are, right? And I don't think this is that tough of a take, too. Texas Tech, okay, they beat Abilene Christian by one point in a shootout, 52-51, to and they beat North Texas 66-21. They lost in Pullman 37 to 16 to Washington State. Arizona State's undefeated. They just went on the road last week and won against Texas State, who is arguably at the same level of Texas Tech this season, I would say. Arizona State has beat Mississippi State as well this year. This is just the better football team. Arizona State is much better than Texas Tech. I don't know why they're underdog they're underdogs going in this game. I don't know why. Texas Tech has not beaten anybody this season. Sure, they put up points, but when they played Washington State, they couldn't get the ball moving at all. Arizona State will Arizona State will give up more points against Texas Tech than Texas Tech again or against uh yeah, Arizona State will give up more points against Texas Tech than Washington State did, but still Arizona State's offense should be able to keep up. You know, Skatebo, the running back, the running back's pretty solid. He's able to really get a big, you know, big chunk gains. I think Arizona State's fine in this game. They're gonna go on the road to Texas Tech and they're gonna win this one. We move on to our next one here. I had to include it, Memphis and Navy, just because these are two undefeated schools, right? Memphis is coming off their huge victory last week over Florida State, which again, it's Florida State in the big 2024 and Florida State, you know, it's just, they're just, they're just horrible. They just are. Again, it is, it has been really disappointing for Florida State, obviously, but it is what it is. They are what they are. Um, and Memphis was the better school and we said it. We said they were going to go to Florida State and went outright, went outright and obviously we got that one right. Um, Navy hasn't played a really good school yet. They played Temple and Bucknell, right? Memphis has beaten North Alabama, Troy, and Florida State. And Seth Hennigan is really good. I think he is. I think for this offense, Seth Hennigan's pretty solid. Mario Anderson was able to, again, rip off some big carries against Florida State. They should be able to beat Navy. Again, I know it's tough playing this wing T option offense. It always is. That's for sure. 
Um, but Memphis should be fine. I think, again, if they, they game plan this right and they scheme this right, they should be able to shut down this Navy offense, which, again, hasn't lost so far this season, but they're going on the road. I think Memphis should be fine coming off the biggest win of the season. They are another team that's you know has their eyes in the playoffs now after beating a you know, power four school in Florida State. Give me Memphis to win the football game and give me them to cover the nine and a half as well. Give me the Tigers to win on the road at Navy. Next up, Utah taking on Oklahoma State. Ollie Gordon has not been the same this season. He just hasn't. Ollie Gordon has not been the same running back this year. Um, he, again, had like 40 yards last week. I understand it was a dominant victory, but Ollie Gordon, again, was the best player in college football going into the season, and he really just hasn't shown that so far this year. Alan Bowman's like 26, but he's been doing all right for this team. Alan Bowman has been the best part of this Oklahoma State team. But now when they're taking on a really good defense in Utah, I think a defense that is capable enough, who shut Baylor down to 12 points, I don't know how well Oklahoma State's really able to move the football in this game. Again, Ollie Gordon hasn't been able to get going. Utah's able to stop that. Utah's able to stop the pass game as well. That, that's rough. I think that's really rough for OK State in this one. Um, I believe Cam Rising should be back, I think, or maybe if it's Isaac Wilson, I think it's fine. Isaac Wilson played a decent football game last week. Um, I really don't think he's all that horrible. Obviously, the brother of Zach Wilson going to Utah. Um, Utah's just better. They are the better football team here. Um, this game, is this game in, it's in Oklahoma, but still, Utah are the favorites for the reason, for, for a reason, because they should be. Um, again, other than Alan Bowman, who has been good, the run game for Oklahoma State isn't that great this season. Sure, Ollie Gordon's still a good running back, but he just hasn't been the Ollie Gordon of the last couple of years. Utah's able to stop the pass game. They should be able to win. I like their offense. Again, it's either Cam Rising or Isaac Wilson. If it's Cam Rising, you get the two probably oldest quarterbacks in college football going at it. I think Cam Rising is better than Alan Bowman, though. I understand he hasn't had a great season just yet, but and he's been dealing with injuries, but I think Cam Rising should be good enough to win this football game for Utah. If not, Isaac Wilson should be able to win it, too. Give me the Utes to go on the road and win the football game. Next up, had to talk about it, Cal and Florida State. Guys, Cal is going to FSU and winning easily. This is the biggest mispriced line of the week. California is not losing to FSU. No way, no how is that happening. Like in no imagine, in no world is FSU beating Cal this game. No shot, no chance. You've got a 3-0 team. I don't care they're going from California to Florida to Tallahassee. It doesn't matter. Cal's plus 105, take advantage of that line. This team went to Auburn and won. Their defense is stopping Every offense they played so far, SDSU, Davis, and Auburn, they have stuffed all their run games. They've stopped their offense. They've halted any momentum their opposing team or their, that offense has been able to get. Um, Jaden Ott has been really confusing this season because Javion Thomas has been the lead back for them. And Jaden Ott was supposed to be their big star going into the year. Really has not gotten anything going in the run game. Fernando Mendoza has been good. He's been a very good, you know, Kind of a game manager at points, but he's been good in that role this season for Cal, and they should be able to beat Florida State. Guys, Florida State's offense, I don't really think DJ is the... I don't think DJ is the problem, I'll be honest with you. It's just their run game so horrible. They get stuck running on first down, running on second down, they get nothing, and you force DJ on a third and seven. Again, I don't think Ugi Angale is the best, but I don't think it's all his fault. And their defense, too, hasn't been great. It hasn't been the FSU defense of last year, obviously. Florida State starting the season 0-4. Cal's going here and winning. This is the, I think this is a lock. I'm serious. At plus 105, all day. Give me the Cal Bears to go to FSU and win. We've already seen FSU lose twice so far at home this season against Boston College and Memphis. They're going to lose for a third time at home. California's got this, and I think they really dominate FSU. Their defense is not going to let Florida State get anything going this game. Give me the Golden Bears to win and to cover, obviously, the two and a half as well. Thought I'd talk about it. This is a good game. This is a really good game between, you know, a really good Mac school in Toledo and a very good COS, COSA school in Western Kentucky, right? Western Kentucky coming off the middle Tennessee win last week, right? They beat Eastern Kentucky before that. Don't want to talk about the Alabama game, but it is what it is. Toledo's undefeated coming off a huge win over Mississippi State last week. They went to Mississippi State and won the football game. 
Again, they're doing this without their former quarterback, who we're going to talk about in a second, in Daquan Finn, because Tucker Gleason has been really good for Toledo at the same exact time. Gleason has done his job, and he's been very effective for this Rockets team. Um, however, I think Western Kentucky actually wins the football game. I think they do. Um, I butchered it. I don't know why I put plus 105 there and plus 110 up there. They are plus 110 currently on the odds, and I like the Hilltoppers, right? Now, TJ Finley hasn't been exactly what I've expected him to be. Uh, Kaden Veltkamp, I believe his name, has been better than TJ Finley, unfortunately. And again, I like TJ Finley a lot more in the offseason, but I think Kaden is slightly better right now. He's been performing better for Western Kentucky. Regardless of who starts this game at quarterback, Western Kentucky's got the all-around better defense, and they have the all-around better offense, too. Um, just as a whole, yes, Toledo can air the ball out. Gleason's been good throwing the ball. But their run game just has been all right. Willie Shaw's been doing okay, but I think Western Kentucky's got a better all-around offense. And if they're able to stop the pass to Toledo, they should be fine. Give me the Hilltoppers to win this game. It's in Western Kentucky as well, which is a big factor. I think these games, these two teams are very evenly matched. And because they are so evenly matched, I am going to slightly favor the home team. Give me the Hilltoppers to win this game again in Kentucky. Next up, a huge game. Tennessee goes on the road to Oklahoma, and we are taking Tennessee to cover the seven points. I don't think Oklahoma's that good. I don't think they are. I think they are mid-SEC. I think Georgia's better than them. I think Alabama's better than them. I think Ole Miss is better. Tennessee's better. Texas, Missouri. I think a lot of these schools are better than Oklahoma. Guys, they've only, they beat Houston by four points. They beat Tulane by 15. All right, you know, Jackson Arnold is not bad. Um, he's pretty good, actually. But Tennessee, I think, has the best offense right now in college football. Okay, even in that game against Kent State, right, where they went 71-0. When they started just running the ball out, starting in the second quarter, because it was pointless to throw at that point, they were still ripping off 25 a carry against Kent State. Their O-line, dominant. Their run game, dominant. Nico, dominant. Yeah, that Tennessee team is that good. They are going to put up numbers on Oklahoma. They are going to, again, Tennessee plays that up-tempo offense, get on the ball really quickly, snap it, let's air it out, let's get going. Guys, Oklahoma is not going to be able to keep up. It's that simple. The Sooners will not be able to keep up with this high-powered and explosive Tennessee offense, and the Volunteers are going to win this game, and they're going to do it pretty easily as well. Give me Tennessee to go on the road to Oklahoma and win this football game. Next up, we have got Michigan State going to Boston College. I'm taking Michigan State to go on the road and win. I think they shock Boston College here. I think Michigan State is getting a little bit underrated right now. I don't know. They're flying under the radar. Sure, they've had nothing but close games, but this game against BC will be another close game. Aiden Childs needs to step it up. He has started to, you know, get there. Um... But this will be another close game against BC. It's going to be a close game. BC is a very good school. But I think Michigan State actually goes out and wins this football game. They go on the road and they get it done. Again, Aiden Childs has, a, has to limit the turnovers, which, again, you've got to feel like it's a point of emphasis for the Spartans going into this week. If they can limit the turnovers, they should be fine. And that's exactly what the Spartans are going to do. They're going to go into Boston College and they're going to win the football game. Um... Don't get me wrong, I like BC, I like Castellanos, I like Castellanos, he's been playing really well this season. Treshawn Ward and Kyle Robichaux have been good out the backfield too. I think this is a juggernaut game between Michigan State and Boston College. I think it's a very close game. That's why I think 6.5 is by far, again, regardless of who you think is winning the football game, 6.5 is just too many points. Um, but on top of that, I am taking Michigan State to go out there and win the football game at the same time. Giving Michigan State to go on the road and shock Boston College, a huge win for the Spartans, who are surprisingly, I think, sneaking under the radar so far this season for a lot of people in the Big Ten. We got two more games to go. We've got Colorado and Baylor. Give me Colorado to win their first Big 12 game of the year. Again, the emphasis for Colorado and the goal is obviously clear. You got to win the Big 12. Now, are they going to do it? Probably not. But I'm cheering for them. I liked what I saw in the Colorado State game. For the first time ever, Colorado went out there and blew out a team they were supposed to beat. That was really impressive, I think, because they haven't done that yet. Now they go to now they get this game at home. It's homecoming in Boulder against Baylor, who lost by 11 points to Utah. Daquan Finn is, you know, doing his thing at quarterback for them. Um, but, oh wait, no, it's, it's Sawyer Robinson now, isn't it? It's Sawyer Robertson. It is Sawyer Robertson. That's my fault. It's Sawyer Robertson, I think, right? Did Finn get set down? Yeah. Robertson starting his Air Force. Uh, Daquan Finn played the Utah game. It's unfortunate for Daquan Finn, but again, Robertson, you know, 
I guess, you know, threw for 315 yards in that game. I assume they're going to go with him next week. He threw for more yards in one game than Daquan Finn did in two. Um, but again, Baylor is going to be pretty run heavy for the most part. At times, they're going to be. I think Colorado is just better. I don't think Baylor's, Baylor's offense doesn't really blow me away at all. Um, their defense will concern me a little bit because they have only given up 18 points this entire season. That kind of scares me a bit for Colorado. But Colorado should be able to score as long as they're able to, again, keep Shadour clean in the pocket, which, you know, I hope they are. I hope they do. They should be fine. Colorado should win the football game. I think they covered the two points as well. This is a huge game for this program, though. Again, this will dictate where you go the rest of the season. If you can win your Big 12 opener, there is hope for this team that they can still win the Big 12 and make the playoffs. If they lose this game, it's all going to start to unravel. Again, you again, you got all those, you know, got all those egos in the locker room. It might get difficult. I think Colorado wins this football game, though. I trust in Shadur Sanders. He's the best He's the best quarterback in college football. I will still say it. He's the best quarterback in college football. Shadur Sanders in Colorado will win this football game, and they will sneak out of a game, or they will barely edge out a victory at home against the Baylor Bears. As we close things off with our final game here, K-State going to BYU. I'm taking Kansas State to win the football game, but I think BYU covers at the same exact time. Had to talk about this game a little bit here. Again, you got two undefeated teams. K-State's 3-0. BYU's 3-0 as well. Two Big 12 schools. The first, you know, Big 12 game for uh, for Brigham Young. Of course, K-State's coming off that huge victory against Arizona. And I cannot state how big that victory is for them. Because again, if they can shut down that offense to seven points, they will be able to shut down pretty much any offense. And especially a BYU offense that has struggled to get going at times this season. Uh, Kansas State should be able to win this football game. I don't know if they cover just because this game is in Provo. Um, believe yeah, Provo, right? BYU's Provo. Yeah, just because this game is in Provo. But I think Avery Johnson, and the guys, are able to pull out this game with a victory. I think it's. I think BYU like backdoor covers in this game. Seriously, I think Kansas State's going to be in control of this game for the most part. But BYU is going to make a late push, and BYU will cover the spread. But Kansas State again is by far the better school. This is an undefeated team that is going to be ranked for most of the season, and a team that's going to make a push to win the Big Twelve. Hell, I liked Arizona a lot in the Big Twelve, and K State got rid of them. I think you're looking at Kansas State and Utah as two of the best schools in the Big 12 this season, but we will again have to see as we go down of the, we go down the stretch here of this college football year. So folks, thank y'all for watching our week number four college football predictions here on the channel. Make sure to hit that subscribe button down below for more. Make sure you like and enjoy the video. Make sure to comment if you do disagree with any of the picks. We'll be back next week, or sorry, next week for, yeah, for more college football picks and tomorrow for our NFL predictions as well. Folks, thank y'all for watching and Mamba forever.